Well, for more insight into the state of the U.S. economy and jobs, let's bring in Gabriel Ehrlich. He's the director of the research seminar in quantitative economics at the University of Michigan. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So starting with jobs, I'd like your thoughts on today's U.S. Labor Department report. What's behind the slowdown? Well, overall, we had a total of 210,000 job gains in November. And that was certainly a disappointment. The expectation was for 550,000 job gains. So you can understand why people are uh, disappointed. And for comparison, we had a, an average of about 470,000 job gains per month over the previous three months. So that's the headline number. Uh, there were a few sectors that were especially disappointing. Uh, we had a big miss in leisure and hospitality employment. We only had about 23,000 job gains. And, and of course, you know, we're hoping to see stronger job gains in that sector. We had almost no recovery in healthcare and employment in healthcare remains down quite a bit during the pandemic. And then finally, state and local government also lost jobs. Now, it's interesting because the household survey, which does include discouraged workers and those holding part-time jobs for economic reasons, that did paint a rosier picture in terms of a 1.1 million, million jobs added and seeing that labor force increasing by over 500,000. So what is then the best way to gauge the overall health of the U.S. labor market? Well, this, uh, this was absolutely a tale of two surveys. As you mentioned, the, the monthly jobs report contains results from two surveys. The first one is called the establishment survey, and that's where that 210,000 uh, job gains number comes from. The second one, as you mentioned, is the household survey, where the unemployment rate uh, comes from. And as you said, it was much rosier, that the household survey was much rosier this month than the establishment survey with over a million job gains. That's, that's a very strong number. We don't usually focus on the job gains from the household survey because it is a noisier measure than the establishment job gains. So, you know, the truth is likely to be in between. It's, it's hard to make, uh, you, you know, to, to, to get perfect clarity on, from any one number or any right. one month's report. So then for those who aren't returning to the workforce, talk about some of the key roadblocks or reasons why they aren't coming back to faster pace. Yeah, so, you know, the, the labor force has not picked up quite as much as people had, had hoped. We did see some gains this month. Uh, one of the reasons is retirements. So, you know, uh, more people are retired than you would have expected in the, in the United States before the pandemic. Uh, you know, when you think about elderly workers, they might be looking at the pandemic, looking at, at COVID and deciding, you know what, I'm going to sit out. And of course, the stock market is up. That makes it easier to sit out from the labor market. And it's true. People don't talk enough about people retiring from these jobs and they sort of paint it as people just want to leave. In terms of this great resignation that the media was talking about, are people still leaving jobs at a wreck pace? And, and what can companies do to try and either get recruitment up or perhaps lure them back? Yeah, absolutely. Pe you know, people are still leaving jobs at a very fast pace. Uh, what we're seeing is that wages are rising at the low end of the wage distribution. So, you know, employers are, are, are realizing that they, they need to make the job more attractive uh, to, to keep workers in what can be very demanding jobs. So, uh, you know, there's, there's pay and, and we're seeing some of that. Uh, there's also getting out in front, making sure your, your workforce feels valued and, uh, you know, feels, feels like uh, they are important to you and, and that they have a future in, in the role. Now, obviously, we have the Omicron variant throwing a spanner in the works. What's your expected impact of this new variant on the labor market, especially things like the hospitality sector or these face-to-face -face industries in the coming weeks? Well, we do expect the, the pandemic to pick up uh, as, as we move into the winter here in the United States, especially in the northern part of the country. We were expecting that even before the Omicron variant uh, really came into the news. So, so in that sense, uh, you know, it's, it's not a shock. Uh, certainly, if if the Omicron variant turns out to be as bad as some people fear, it, it will slow down the recovery. But, you know, the reality is that the pandemic is still very much uh, an important part of the economic recovery. The faster we can make progress on, on the pandemic, the faster the labor market will recover. So then as you look at the whole picture of how the U.S. economy is doing, how do you see this latest data, whether it's employment, the upcoming inflation report, how does that factor into the Federal Reserve's next moves? Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll be watching the inflation report very closely. We do expect inflation to start to ease up uh, going forward, especially as we move in, into next year. Here in Michigan, where I live, uh, the auto industry is very important. We're already seeing that the supply chain for, for the auto sector is starting to improve. So we do think that inflation is, is going to stay elevated for some time, but it's going to start to ease. And of course, if, if we do see signs of that, that will make the Fed's job easier.
And as you mentioned, we're coming into this, this winter season. Looking at some of the sectors that will be having an easier time recruiting versus those struggling the most, who are you keeping an eye on? Well, you know, I think it's important if, if your business is not uh, primarily a face-to-face -face business, it's going to be easier to recruit. Uh, certainly sectors where uh, being face to face with customers is a really essential part of the business is, is where we see a lot of the shortfall. So we do think that, you know, in leisure and hospitality, it's going to be difficult. Um, one place where we're seeing difficulties recruiting is in state and local government. You know, wages are rising at the low end, especially of the wage distribution. It, it seems like maybe local government's not keeping pace. And we do hear that it's hard for local government to hire right now and, and to recruit. We do appreciate your insights. Gabriel Ehrlich there, Director of the Research Seminar in Quantitative Economics at the University of Michigan. Thank you.